here we go. The USGA and the RNA have announced plans for the golf ball rollback. This has been talked about for a few years now. And the proposal is that, or what they are announcing is that they're going to reduce the distance the ball can fly. So right now they do golf ball testing and the golf ball has to maintain um, certain distances. So they test it at 120 miles per hour club head speed with the driver and the ball has to stay or not fly 317 yards. That's kind of the parameters roughly, right? Don't quote me on the exact numbers, but that's basically it. What they're changing is that now that swing speed is going to be increased to 125 miles an hour and the distance stays the same, meaning you have to roll the golf ball back so it doesn't fly as far. Okay, this is the most, I think we can all agree, even Brandel Chambly, and I agree on this point, he's against it. He's tweeted things that, uh, have been against this rollback. And I I think everybody's against the rollback except like one person. So let's look at what good old Rory McIlroy has to say about this issue because this is fascinating. Rory, of all people, chimes in. And he's like, I don't understand the, the anger about the golf ball rollback. It will make no difference whatsoever to the average golfer and puts golf back on the path of sustainability. It will also help bring back certain skills in the pro game that have been eradicated over the past two decades. What exact skills are we bringing back in the game that we've lost if you roll the ball back? Are you going to have to play more fades and draws now than before? Just because they roll the ball back doesn't mean they're going to put a lot of cover on it, Rory. They're not, okay? So yeah, I don't think that's going to be what's going to happen here. It's going to be the same exact ball. It's just not going to go as far. The spins, everything's going to be the same. The, the manufacturers are going to do the best they can to make it compatible with the current equipment that they have. Meaning if you roll it back to like 1991, ballada ball, then you're gonna have to make new equipment to accommodate that ball club face interaction, especially with the driver. Because a ballada ball with today's driver is not the same as a ballada ball with 1990 technology. It's different, or even a wooden a persimmon ball and ball. like they, they go together. There's a symbiotic relationship between club face and ball. Okay, now I want to know this, and you let me know your thoughts, you scientific engineers out there. Could the golf ball manufacturers make a ball that at 125 miles an hour of club head speed, the ball stays within those parameters of 317 yards, but at slower swing speeds, you lose no distance. Meaning that, let's say you swing it between 100 and 115 miles an hour. The compression is such that you're getting maximum ball flight, but anything over 115 miles an hour, then the ball starts not going as far. You don't get as much distance. So right now they say like a, a mile per hour of club, uh, club head speed gets you three yards or ball speed, whatever, gets you three extra yards. So let's say at 115 miles an hour, you're getting, let's just say 300 yards of carry. And so 116 would be 303. But let's say at 116, you only get 302, right? So you get a little more, but not only two yards. And let's say 117, it goes, you know, through a three. So you're only getting one yard increments all the way up to 125 and it's 317. And then, you know, it could go farther if you swing faster, but it's not going that three yards. Couldn't you make a ball with its compression in the inner core with that capability? I want to know that. I don't know if it's possible. There's some smart people out there and ball engineers and scientists and technology people know whether or not 
that can or cannot be done. But Rory, I don't think any skills are going to come back into the game. If anything, it hurts it more for the non-professional golfer. The professional could put in the time to practice those skills, but the non-professional, they got a job. They got, they don't have the ability. They don't have the swing speed. They don't have the, 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 they, they haven't practiced. They don't have the technique to be able to pull off shots that they've never pulled off for many, many years, if ever. So that's ridiculous. All right. And also this, I want to know this. Why would the USGA and the RNA do this? Why? It, it, don't believe the fact that, oh, there's outdated golf courses out there that we're trying to bring back into the USGA fold of courses that we can rotate and play championships at. That's ridiculous. There are not. All you have to do is grow the grass. Why don't you just grow the grass on the courses? Grow the grass. Mow it less. Let it grow more. Okay, maybe it takes more water to grow it. Not everywhere it takes more water. And Or how about make the fairway skinnier? You can always do that if you want to toughen up a golf course. You can add more trees. You can add more sand. You can do many things. Just You don't have to make the rough taller. You can make the sand traps and the you know natural scapes, desert scapes, or wherever you are closer to the fairway. You can make the golf courses more difficult. The ball roll going 10 yards shorter, eh, that's not going to bring all these golf courses back into. So the question is why? 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 I mean, some conspiracy theorists might think that because there's all this golf ball competition out there with the, all these other made golf balls, and they've gotten to the point where they're chipping away at the Titleist and the Callaways and the, the big brands, Bridgestone golf ball companies, that they're taking market share away, that, hey, if we change the ball, that's going to really affect the smaller guy manufacturers more than the big guys. The big guys are going to be able to handle this, but you keep changing the the rules and the parameters, and these guys got to go back to R&D and do all this investment to keep that small market share that they have. It's going to put, it could, conspiracy, it could be possible though, is it why they're doing this? To, to scoot out all these like small market golf ball brands. That's a thought that I don't think we've discussed. Let's look at some of these comments that people have been posting in response to Rory McIlroy. And uh, one says, I'm a little confused by you saying this will make no difference whatsoever to the average golfer, but then you explain uh, why the average golfer should be upset at elite pros and manufacturers. Do you mind clarifying that? Well, he just says, look, I don't believe an average golfer giving up five to 10 yards off the tee is gonna have a material effect on their actual score, handicap, or enjoyment of the game. And then we got, well, does uh, five to 10 yards affect the top players in the game? Well, I guess it does. Yes, it does. And so back at you, Rory. There's so many comments that are basically attacking Rory on this because those yards, those yards, are big for a lot of the average players. Should we have two separate rules for pros? And no, we should we should all play the same ball. We should all be able to play by the same set of rules. But I don't believe that this this rolling back the golf ball benefits the average player. See, the average player supports the entire game of golf. It supports all the golf courses. It supports the entire tour. It does absolutely everything. So therefore, they should make rules that benefit the average player, not acquiesce to Rory McIlroy. He doesn't support golf. We do. We all do that. So this would be my proposal to the golf industry, the PGA Tour, Live Golf, Every championship out there, everybody, here's the deal. Just because the USGA and the RNA say they're going to make golf ball 
roll back. They're going to roll back the ball so that it has to be conforming. Just because they do that doesn't mean the PGA Tour has to implement that into their rules. Just because the USGA says this is the rules of golf, the PGA Tour could say, too bad. I don't care what you say the rules of golf are. This is what we're going to do. There's only one event on the PGA. It's not even a PGA Tour event. There's only one event that the PGA Tour players play. That's a USGA-sanctioned event, and that's the U.S. Open. That's it. They have one event, the U.S. Open, that the top players in the world play. Now, they have the U.S. Amateur, the Mid-Am. They've got a lot of championships, but there's only one for the PGA Tour players. The PGA Tour, no pro golfer can play in the U.S. Amateur. It's an amateur event. So this, the U.S. Open is it. So the PGA Tour does not have to implement that rule. Live Golf does not have to play by the rules of golf. They can do whatever they want. The PGA Tour can do whatever they want. Anybody can do whatever they want. The only people that they can enforce this rule upon are those playing in the USGA sanctioned events. So I would say this, the USGA and the RNA, forget it. We're not going to do, I would just say too bad. We're not, you can say it, but we're not going to implement it. Go, no, no, that's what I would do. And then I would say, if you want to make a conforming golf ball, then you make it. You go spend the money. You go market your own ball, a USGA golf ball, and you see who buys it. And you say, this is the only official golf ball on the market that uh, 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 you know abides by the rules of golf. Good luck. I would just boycott the USGA. Say, no, we're not going to play. No one play. We're n- we do not accept the terms of what you've laid out there. 